Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at pure mathematics exam question on parametric equations, parametric differentiation. Here is the exam question. Figure 1 shows a sketch of the curve C with parametric equations x equal 5 plus 2 tan t, y equal 8 sec squared t, where t is more than or equal to minus pi over 3 but less than or equal to pi over 4. Part A use parametric differentiation to find the gradient of C at x equal 3. Ladies and gents, please pause the video, have a go at part A once you've got your complete solution, then play the video. Let's have a look at the solution to part A. Now in part A, I need to find the gradient function dy over dx. Once I've got my dy over dx, I can then substitute an appropriate t value in order to find the gradient of the curve C at the point x equal 3. Now, how do I do this? Well, I need to apply parametric differentiation because I've got parametric equations. So let's start off with the x equation. I've got x equal 5 plus 2 tan t. I need to work out dx over dt. So if I differentiate a constant, in this case 5, that becomes 0. If I differentiate 2 tan t, that becomes 2 sec squared t, because I know that tan t differentiates 2 sec squared t. So that is my dx over dt. Now, my y equation is 8 sec squared t. So I've got 8. The sec squared t, I can rewrite it as sec t in bracket squared. So I've got in bracket sec t squared. Now I'm going to find dy over dt using the chain rule for differentiation. Bring down the power, so 8 times 2 is 16. Subtract 1 from the power, 2 take away 1 is 1. Multiplied by the derivative of sec t, which is sec t tan t. Now I can simplify this. Okay, so I've got dy over dt is equal 16 sec squared t tan t. Right, so now I can apply parametric differentiation. dy over dx, we call that the gradient function. If we have parametric equations, it is given by dy over dt divided by dx over dt. So I've got 16 sec squared t tan t divided by 2 sec squared t. Notice that we've got a common sec squared t, so we can cancel out the sec squared t. And we know that 16 divided by 2 is 8. So I've got 8 tan t. That is my gradient function. Now, when x is equal 3, this implies that 5 plus 2 tan t is equal 3. So 3 take away 5 is minus 2. So 2 tan t is equal minus 2. And minus 2 divided by 2 is minus 1. So tan t is equal minus 1. Now I can work out t by taking tan inverse of minus 1. If I do this, I get t equal minus pi over 4. Okay, so when x is equal 3, we know that t is equal minus pi over 4. So the gradient of the curve C at x equal 3 is technically the gradient of the curve C at t equal minus pi over 4. So I've got dy over dx evaluated at t equal minus pi over 4. So this is going to equal 8 tan minus pi over 4. This gives me precisely minus 8. So ladies and gents, the gradient of the curve C at x equal 3 is minus 8. That completes part A of the exam question. Let's move on to the next part of the question. The curve C has equation y equal f of x, where f is a quadratic function. Part B, find f of x in the form a in bracket x plus b to the power 2 plus c, where a, b and c are constants to be found. Please pause the video, have a go at part B. Once you've got your complete solution, then play the video. Let's have a look at the solution to part B of the exam question. So ladies and gents, in part B, what we want to do is convert the parametric equation of the curve C into a Cartesian equation, y equal f of x, where f of x is written in this particular form, a in bracket x plus b to the power 2 plus c. Right, so let's proceed forward. Now, if we look at the parametric equation of the curve C, we notice that there is a tan and there is a sec involved. So we need to start thinking about an identity that connects a tan and a sec. 
and that identity is 1 plus tan squared t equals x squared t. So it would be useful to write down the identity 1 plus tan squared t equals sec squared t. Okay, now let's start off with the y equation. I've got y equal 8 sec squared t. If I go back to the x equation, there is a tan involved. So what I can do over here is rewrite sec squared t in terms of tan squared t. So I've got y equal 8 in bracket. Sec squared t is equivalent to 1 plus tan squared t. So now I can expand the bracket. So if I expand the bracket, I get 8 plus 8 tan squared t. Right, let's have a look at the x equation. So x is equal 5 plus 2 tan t. I can make tan t the subject. So if I do this, I get x minus 5 over 2 equal tan t. So I call this equation 1 and this equation 2. I can substitute, so sub equation 2 into equation 1. Right, so if I do this, I get the following result. y equal 8 plus 8 in bracket tan t is x minus 5 all over 2. So we square that because we've got tan squared t. Right, so I can simplify this. I've got 8 plus 8 x minus 5. So take the numerator, square that. Over, take 2, the denominator, square that, which is 4. Further simplify this, I've got 8 plus 8 over 4 is 2, lots of x minus 5 in bracket, squared. I can swap these two terms, rewrite it as y equal 2 in bracket x minus 5 squared plus 8. And that there ladies and gents is the desired form. Okay, let's have a look at part C of the exam question. We know that the Cartesian equation of the curve C is this equation over here. Now the curve C is a quadratic. The quadratic is written in complete the square form so we can actually deduce the turning point of the quadratic. So the turning point of the quadratic will just be 5, 8. Now I'm going to substitute t equal minus 5 over 3 into the parametric equation to get the coordinate of this point. So when t is equal minus 5 over 3 x is equal 5 plus 2 tan minus pi over 3. Okay, so I can work out x. It is 5 minus 2 root 3. Okay, so that's the x coordinate. Let's work out the y coordinate. So y will equal 8 in bracket. Now, sec t is 1 over cos t, so I can write 1 over cos t. Uh, my t value is minus pi over 3 and I square that because I've got sec squared t. So if I put this into my calculator, I get 32. Right, so the coordinate of this particular point over here would therefore be 5 minus 2 root 3, 32. Now I'm going to work out the coordinate of this point over here. So that point, you can work out the coordinate by substituting t equal pi over 4. So when t is equal pi over 4, x is equal 5 plus 2 tan pi over 4. I can put this into my calculator and I get 7. Moving on to the y coordinate, so for y I've got 8 in bracket 1 over cos pi over 4 squared. If I put this into my calculator I get y equals 16. So the coordinate of this point over here would therefore be 7, 16. So now I'm going to label the turning point on the graph. I'm going to label this point on the graph and this point on the graph. Okay, so for the turning point, ladies and gents, we have the following result. The x coordinate is 5 and the corresponding y coordinate is 8. For this point over here, uh, the x coordinate is 5 minus 2 square root 3. By the way, 5 minus 2 square root 3 is less than 5, so it makes sense. 5 minus 2 square root 3 being labelled here. So the x coordinate is 5 minus 2 square root 3, and the corresponding y coordinate is 32. For this point over here, we know that the x coordinate is 7, 
and the corresponding y coordinate is 16. Now for the range we need to focus on the y axis so in particular we're looking at this range here okay notice that the range will therefore be f of x is greater than or equal to the y coordinate of the turning point so that's 8 but it's going to be less than or equal to the uppermost point which is 32 and so that there ladies and gents completes part c of this exam question and this teaching video on pure mathematics exam question parametric equations parametric differentiation if you found this teaching video useful please don't forget to subscribe leave a like leave a comment turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time i post a new teaching video